Now, this application here, the customer's application, is the one that we'll be working in and converting. Not the entire application, we're going to concentrate on converting uh, just one view and one form so that we can display a view and, a do and the documents within this database. Uh, the view that we'll be converting is the customer by name view, but you can see, uh, like you know, many notes applications, there's also a customer by region view and a customer by sales rep view and so on. If we open up one of these customer documents, we'll see the kind of information uh, that's in the fields in this document. Okay, so this should look uh, very familiar to you. Um, in your traditional notes, domino application development, uh, the form and view uh, design objects are very important. Okay? Um, there's certainly um, uh, the main ingredients for painting the user's screen. Okay? The user is typically looking at uh, uh, either a form or a view, uh, at least partially, you know, when they're looking at something within a notes application. Um, and you can deliver an entire notes application with just these. Just, a, you know, one form and several views okay, to track some information. So you're all familiar with that. So why did I bother? Well, in XPage development, the form and the view um, have lost some steps. Okay, they're kind of at the bottom here. And really, they're just there to uh, form the, the, the data schema for the various data sources. So you can have a domino view data source for an X page if you want to display a domino view on the X page. Notice in the center here, the presentation layer, whatever the user is looking at, interfacing with, will be through an X page or one of the support design elements like custom controls. Custom controls are sub X pages, much like a sub form is to a form. And then your style sheets and your themes are used for styling those X pages. Point is, X pages are in the presentation layer, your domino forms and views, only there to define your data sources. Which fields to display in that domino document data source, uh, which columns to display in that domino view data source. Now, with 8.5.0, the XSP engine was added to the HTTP. Yeah, why do I have trouble with that? The HTTP task on the Domino server, and basically that's your X Pages runtime engine. So, whenever um, a client requests an X Page, uh, then the XSP task is going to uh, return that as an HTML document, either to uh, a Node's client or a web browser. Uh, in the center box there, uh, the point on, on the X pages are compiled in Designer, so when you save the X page or if you manually compile uh, all of the X pages in an application, they're actually compiled to Java class files. Now, uh, this screen here is showing us um, the flavors of JavaScript. When you're programming in an X page, you're programming in JavaScript. And there's uh, client-side JavaScript. When you're doing that, you have access to the HTML document object. And then server-side JavaScript. Server-side JavaScript runs on the Domino server. And you have some back-end classes available to you. So you have those Domino object back-end classes. You know it's database class. You know it's view class. You know it's document class. So they're available in your server-side JavaScript. Also, uh, most of the app functions have been ported to a JavaScript library, or JavaScript libraries, uh, and they're available to you as well. So there's a lot of familiarity, although there's a lot of new in X page development, there's certainly some familiar points uh, that you can use as you start to get into X page development. And what we're seeing here is some server-side JavaScript and right smack in the middle of that JavaScript, what we see is a, an at DB lookup. Okay, so you're familiar with that. You might notice some subtle differences, commas instead of, instead of uh, semicolons to separate the arguments in that, uh, because it is JavaScript. And that is what is used to separate arguments. 
Okay, uh, I'm going to um, get into another lesson. May not be obvious, but we'll take a look at, um, we'll start to get into design. Uh, what tools are available to you uh, in Designer to develop your X pages? Uh, we'll take a look at um, the procedure for creating an X page, uh, for adding controls to an X page, um, the utility of the outline view for selecting and managing the components on your X page, and we'll even take a look at troubleshooting as well. So, We're seeing Designer here, and this was actually shot uh, with Designer 853. And the application navigator, uh, you're comfortable with that. Um, so a way of managing all of your projects in Domino Design and Eclipse, they're called projects. Of course, we're comfortable with notes applications or NSFs, or notes databases. In Eclipse, they're referred to as projects. Um, so basically a way of uh, gathering working sets for different projects that you're working on uh, and accessing the various design elements like the X pages and the custom controls. Uh, the X page editor comes in two flavors. Uh, this is the design tab, which is selected at the bottom. So that's your WYSIWYG type editor. And this is the source editor. And you can see that uh, an X page source is actually XML. You can include HTML in here as well. Uh, you can enter it in directly, uh, but it needs to be well formed. You need to close all of your tags. Okay, some other Eclipse views that are very useful in X-Page development. Uh, the outline view, uh, you'll use that a lot. Uh, when you select, basically the outline view gives you a complete hierarchical component tree of all of the components that you add to your X-Page. When you select them in the outline view, you'll see their properties in the properties view. You can set their properties, and it will also be selected in the editor, either the uh, uh, design editor or the source editor. Okay, properties view for setting properties. The events view for coding your events, so you might add a button to an X page, and that's where you would code the buttons on click events. The control palette is used for adding controls to your X page. Uh, they come in two flavors, uh, your core controls and your container controls. Uh, so your container controls, things like your table control, um, things like your panel control, which is converted to a div in the HTML document, um, and things like a view control. So if you want to display a domino view on an X page, first you would add a view control to that X page and then bind that view control to that domino view data source. Your core controls, many of those are for input. You'll have an edit box control for text input, uh, date perker control, uh, radio button group controls, and so on. Now the data palette will show all of the DOM, or sorry, all of the data sources defined on your X page. Uh, so what we're seeing here is there is a document data, data source that's been added to this X page. Uh, it's actually called document one, and it's showing me all of the fields in that document. So I can choose to drag them into my X page if I want to display those fields. Okay, this is the procedure for creating an X page. Basically, push a button to create an X page, give it a name. At the time you create the X page, you do have the option of adding a data source to that X page, uh, or you can add it later. Uh, this is showing a fairly new X page, just some static text added to the top, and the role of the properties view at the bottom to, in this case, style that static text. When you add, want to add X page controls to your page, like a table control, you, there's two ways you can do it. One is to drag and drop it uh, from the controls palette. That's what we're seeing here for a table control. And the other approach is to hit the other option at the top of the control palette, then click in your editor 
design or source, where you want that element, and then you'll be interrupted with this dialog where you can choose which control you want to add. And the reason you might want to do it this way is that that controls palette can be customized. So depending on what you're working on, the type of project you're working on, you may not want all of the controls available to you. So you customize your palette and take out most of the controls that you won't use, but always get access to them in this way. Now, this is showing the main role of the outline view. So the outline view will give you a, a hierarchical representation of every component that you add to your X page, what they're a child of. When you select it in the outline view, Two things happen. One is the properties for that component will be displayed in the properties view and it will be selected in the editor as well. And the source editor as well. Now, there is some operational options that are available in the outline view. So you can write in the outline view, uh, right click on a component and delete it. And you can drag and drop components. So, if you added a component but you missed the spot slightly, you really wanted it in that panel but you kind of missed it and it fell outside, you can do it right in the outline view. This screen is showing us um, a problem with this X page, a, a compile time error. So some sort of problem here um, and what happens is you'll get a listing or a description of that problem in the problems view and in your navigator uh, you'll see um, little X icon indicating you know, which project, which application the problem is in, uh, and specifically which X page. Okay, so let me demonstrate some of that in Designer. Okay, I'm going to create a new X page in this customer's application and give it a name. A couple of naming rules here. Uh, one is spaces aren't accepted. You might be comfortable with spaces in form design, but it's not going to work here. So I'll give it a name. I do have the option of adding a data source, and I can choose to add a Domino document or a Domino view data source at this time or afterwards. Um, I don't need one right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a new X page. And I've got my big blank empty canvas on my design tab. If I jump over to my source tab, not too much excitement here. Uh, there's a language statement for XML at the top here. And we have our root tag for our X page. That's the XP colon view tag. And everything else that we add to this X page will be between those two tabs. So I'm going to um, begin to add some components to this X page. And first from the container palette, I'm going to add a table. I just drag it and drop it onto that page. And we'll go with 2x2 two two for now. And from my core controls, you know, basically I want to capture, I want to create a simple X page to capture the name and phone number uh, of contacts. Okay. So from my core controls, I'm going to add a label in the left hand cell here, and another label in row two in the left hand cell. And then in the properties, I'm going to give that a more appropriate label. We call this name. And for this second one, I might call that phone. So I've got my labels. Now I need some sort of an input control. So I can select uh, edit box. This is going to be just text. So I'll select an edit box control and drag it next to name. Now for the phone one, uh, I'm going to use this other approach. So I'm going to click on the other option at the top and then click where I want to add a control. And then from here, choose which control I want to add. So I'll add that edit box control. And I can continue on here. 
I might um, add a few breaks and then add a button control and give that label like submit. And at this point, you know, I might want to test out my X page. So just like you can preview a form, I can preview my X page in a browser. It asks me to save it. It's actually going to compile it to a Java class at this point in time and deliver it as an HTML document to my browser. Now, I'm going to leave that open and also preview in my notes line. And let's take a look at and compare that. So, um, that does look quite similar. So that's one thing that XPace development brings us. Okay, if, if you've done any dominant web application development, um, that's a fine art. Okay, um, you deal, deal with things like dollar dollar view template, dollar dollar return, and you've got two code streams more or less, uh, and you do a lot of hide when, hide when notes, hide when web. Okay? So um, in XPace development, it, it truly is uh, right once, right anyway. Okay, uh, back to my design. I'd like to show you a couple more things. Let me expand that outline view. So I can see my X page. This is that view tag in my source code. And everything on this X page is contained within that X page. And I've got my table, so I can select my table, or I can select this uh, label within the table. And as I select these various elements, this edit box control, you're seeing it selected in the design editor, and you're seeing the properties for that control as well. If I've got too many line breaks here, right in my outline, I could choose to perhaps delete one. Now, one last thing to show you. And that is, I'd like to introduce a compile time error and then troubleshoot that. So first off, I've selected my table, and I'm going to switch over to my source, and I'm going to corrupt my source. You can see that. Um, let me expand this a bit. And I have my table selected. You can see my complete table is selected in my source as well. So I'm going to corrupt the end tag here. and then attempt to save that. It actually did save, but I now have introduced an error. So on compile, I do have an error. I do see one problem in my problems view, and the problem is indicating some sort of an ending tag for a table. Now, I am allowed to close this X page and come back to it at a later time to resolve it. In fact, I could even preview this X page right now, and it would be rather functional because it didn't compile, so it's just running from that previous good compile. So, uh, let me troubleshoot this. Oh, let me just show you very, very quickly. You can see the, the error icons in my navigator as another um, way to help me find the location of my error. But truly, the easiest way is to go to the problems view and double click right on that problem entry. It's going to open the X page with the problem and open it directly to the line where you have the problem. And I can correct that. And save once again. And all my problems are solved. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, those are the basics. Howard's going to continue on and he's going to take me through converting that customer's application. Okay, thanks, Paul. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we convert our application is we want to work on the X page that's going to hold a view control to display our view. So there's two ways to create a view control. Um, the first way is just drag the view control over, so it's under the container controls, and we drag it over and we get the uh, dialog box. For a lot of these controls, when you drag them over, you're going to get a dialog box, kind of what you saw when Paul added the table. And in this particular dialog box, we can now choose our view data source, or we can pick a view. 
and the view can be either in this current application or it could be in a different application. The other way to do it is assuming we've already defined a data source for our X page. So over on the left side where you see the number one, we've defined a customer by name data source. That's a view data source. And now we can go to the data palette. So that's over on the right side. And we choose our uh, customers by name view data source that will appear there. And then all the columns from that particular uh, view will show up. And I can drag and drop whatever columns I want to show in this view control. The end result's the same. We're going to create a view control. The only difference is that we create the view data source at the X page level. It's then available to all the controls on your X page. So if you later wanted to use that view for a lookup, you could write some code and use that view data source uh, variable name and refer to that particular uh, view. There are some properties on the view control. Once we set it, uh, on this tab, uh, on this screen, um, you can have to select what X page is going to open when we open a document from the view. So we can first select a particular X page by name, or there's an option which we're showing here. You can have an X page that has the exact same name as the form that's in your form field for your document being opened. So a lot of our views have multiple forms in them. We might have a customer form and then have a contact form that's like a response document. Uh, and we show them both in the view. And this way we can have an X page called customer uh, form X page or a, a comment form. Let's say if the form is called comment form, we can name our X page comment form. And that way we don't have to pick a particular X page to use to uh, open from the view. It will automatically select it for us based on that form field. Okay, let's go look at that. Okay, so in Designer, I'm going to create a new X page that's going to hold my view control. And we're then going to be working with this for the rest of the uh, session. So at this point, I could add a data source to the page. And I can create a uh, view data source. Uh, we'll create it later in a moment. Okay, so one way is to go to the container controls here and just drag over a view control. When I do that, I can now select what view I want to go to. I want the customers by name view. And again, if I wanted to go to another database, I could have selected that option. Uh, let's see, we, uh, we'll come back and look at this view in a second, but we have a, a column here that's a lookup column. And let's say we don't want to get that lookup column, so I can deselect whatever columns I don't want. I'll click OK, and then I'll just go preview. I'm not going to do anything else, just preview it. And there's our view. So we have, notice that it picked up our column headings from the view. We have a pager, and page through the information. And you know, obviously, all the data is there. Let's take a quick look at the uh, underlying view here, so you kind of see what we're working with. Uh, so this is our customers by name view, and you see that information that flowed into our view control on our X page. And we did not want this last column. So that was just a lookup column. Okay, let's let me delete this. Uh, to, to delete it, uh, I can highlight the view control and the outline. Just press delete. And now let me add at the X page property. So I go over, make sure my X page is selected. Go to the data tab. I don't have any data sources defined yet, so I'll click on add. And just to reiterate, you can add multiple data sources, and they can be a combination of view and document data sources. <coughs> So that kind of opens up a lot of possibilities. You know, in the Domino world, we were kind of limited by that. If you remember that chart Paul showed, you know, we had a one-to-one -one relationship. Our form was used to display the document. View was used to display the you know, documents in table format. Uh, but on an X page, we can't have multiple view 
data sources. We have multiple document data sources. So it really opens up a lot of possibilities to combining our information. Uh, as Paul said, probably limited by your screen size. Okay, so I created this view data source. It gave it the name view one. I can actually change the name if I want to make it something more useful. And then I can pick my view, customer my name view. All right, so that didn't you know, do anything yet, but now I can go over to the data tab palette and I can choose, oops, not there yet. changing. The widths are changing. It's making the view look a little weird. 
Uh, Paul has a technical name for that. That's that's the column geo. He's not kidding. That's that's what we call it in the course. So that is a TLCC term that's copyrighted. So don't don't you know, use that without any our permission. Um, so let's fix that. And the way to fix it is pretty easy. We can just go over and give the columns uh, a fixed width. Because what's happening is they're resizing through the widest text in that column on each page. So we'll just uh, give them a fixed width. And there are different ways of specifying, like if you've done any HTML programming, you know that the HTML world, you have different ways of specifying sizes. Uh, one of those is pixels, a VMS, you can do a percent. Auto is the default, which is what we had before, where we got the jiggle. So we'll just use pixels. And I don't have to do that last column, so it won't matter. And now I can save this, go back to my browser, refresh, and you see my uh, column list. And now when I page through it, the column list is staying the same. Okay, so that's just a little tip there. Okay, so we got our view. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to, we want to uh, create an X page to display some documents, because we want to be able to click on, you know, some links in the view control and then open up some document and display the information on that you know, document. So, when we add our data source to the X page, we can choose to add a Domino document data source and we'll select the form or we can add it later so if we have an existing X page we can go in like I did with the view data source I can go to the data tab on the X page and click the add button and give it a form name and then give it a default action as to what happens if we open this X page and it doesn't get past a particular document ID in this case create document which is the default anyway uh, there's two ways we can, uh, at this point, add the various controls to enable the displaying of information on the sex page. Uh, there's the easy way and the hard way. So the easy way is approach number two. First, let's look at the hard way. And that is we can add the controls over one by one. And that's probably okay if you want to put them in a certain position or you want to use something uh, uh, other than the uh, approach in two, where it's going to create a table. Let's look at that. So if we do it individually, we first, you know how Paul first built that table, and then he added uh, label, labels, and then he added the uh, various controls. Uh, we basically have to go through that same process. Uh, you know, we have to build, typically a table is what you use to line things up, but you can do whatever you want. Um, then we, uh, again, we typically want labels so the user knows what to enter. Uh, and then we add our control in the right place and then we bind it to, the most important thing is in step two here, we're going to bind it to our document data source. In this case, we have it to the phone field. So we're going to select for each control, select a underlying domino field that we're binding this control to. The other uh, way to do it is on the data palette, we can select what fields we want to add, and that will create for us a table. And for each field, it will create a label and also create the appropriate control to display that information, and we'll set up the binding automatically. So let's go look at that. <coughs> so first I want to create a new X page. And I could add a data source now. Let's just do it. I'm just kind of in the habit of doing it from the data tab. So I'm going to add a Domino document data source. It's in this current application. And I'll choose customer form. And that's it. Okay, so now the one way uh, to do it would be to create a table drag over again you know you don't have to use the table but it's that always works nicely to align things up I can put in some labels 
If I wanted to add more rows to the table, by the way, I can right click and go to, um, there's options to insert columns and rows and things like that. Uh, let me add an edit box control. I'll come back and work on the properties of these later. Um, so let's first set this up for the customer name. And the second label will set up for the address, maybe. And then I'll drag over and edit box control. Oh, I already got those over there. Uh, click on those. And the last step is to bind these to the appropriate field. So I have the customer field here. And for my address, I'll bind that on the data tab to my address. So I would repeat that for all my fields. A little tedious. But, you know, that is sometimes if you're setting a couple, you know, uh, fields, that's kind of, you know, the best way to go. Uh, the other way to do it is to select all these in the data palette. So, you know, we went from the controls palette to the data palette. And I can drag and drop these over. Uh, let me first explain a little tip. Uh, if you are just starting out in designer and uh, working with X pages, there's on the data palette this little icon here. And when I, uh, the default is to have this deselected. And this is called the select controls dialog box. And when this is deselected, when I drag these over, it will create our table with our labels and our controls. And the controls will be bound to a field. So that's all good. Um, but let me delete this table. And let me turn this option on. So when the option's on, you don't have a little X. And this is a sticky option, so once you do it once, it will remember it, not just for the database that we're working in, but for in your designer client. So I'll drag over these. And now that I have that option on, we get this dialog box. So now we can do some things, fine tuning. Like, let's say I want to move this contact row down below the zip. And let's say that my uh, type will be a combo box. And my region will be a combo box. And my status, I'll make a list box. So I can set types of controls to use for these different fields that are coming in from my domino form. Uh, you can't select all the types of controls, but you can select most of the ones you would probably want to work with uh, with domino type data. Uh, but you can't do a radio box, or a button, or a checkbox. It's the only major glaring omission there. Now these options here, uh, these three checkboxes, first of all we can uh, choose to add a submit button. So you saw Paul added one manually, but we can have one added automatically. And the submit button is used to send our, our you know, information back to the server to save our, our data. The messages control is where validation uh, messages will appear. And so if we said, let's say, a certain control is required, uh, the message uh, will appear in that messages control and it kind of aggregates, you've probably seen a lot of websites where they aggregate all your errors together in one spot. And basically you're doing that, that uh, uh, functionality. Uh, the one other thing I want to do is I don't really want that referral control. Just check that off. Click OK. And you see that now my uh, table is created. Again, it's bound to the appropriate fields. Uh, we have our region is our combo box. Status is a list box. So everything was set up. That's all I'm going to do is preview this, not do any other changes. And you see that we have the you know, X page up and running. A couple issues. Uh, one issue is that on my spit button. Uh, but we don't uh, have any values for our type, region, and status. So we've got to go back in and add those. And let me go fix that mid button. I must have not selected that. Yeah, yeah. I 
and he said, I thought I had a selection. I must have clicked on it again. But no big deal. I'm going to come over and uh, we'll manually add it later. After I open it now. Now we can see the process again. So we'll just select these controls, drag it over, and I change the type to combo box. And the region was combo box. Status and so this works. All right, and I'll check off those options. Now, one way, uh, so you don't, you know, you typically always want these options, so you can save this these settings, which is probably why I somehow deselected it because I'm used to just saving these and they're there <coughs> automatically. It just remembers your choices. You can always override them. All right, let's preview that again. All right, so now I got my submit button and it should be good there. Okay, so we can now create a document with this, uh, put in information, um, and I can submit it, but uh, we, we still really want to go add these values, and we'll come back to that. Uh, probably the most important thing I want to do now is to somehow set up my view control so I can use this X page I just created to open up our existing documents. So what we want to do is enable the view control to uh, show our documents. The first step in that is to select what column or columns we want to use as our link. And then on the uh, column properties for view control, we have the option to show the values in the column as links and we can define how we want to open those in read mode or edit mode. We can always switch back later. The next thing we have to do is for the view control, we have to define what happens when we uh, click on one of those links. What next page are we going to open? So I talked about that before. Uh, in this case, we're just going to select that next page I just created. So we'll go back to our view next page, and we want the customer column to be the one that we can click on, so I'll choose that option, and we'll set it to be in read mode, and next I'll go to my view properties, and go to the view tab, and we'll pick that next page I created that has all the fields on it, all the controls that will show the field information, and that's it, I'll save it, back to my browser, refresh, and now my links are set up for the customer column, and I can click on one, and we'll see all the information being pulled in from the Domino uh, document. Now I have the submit button here, and I click on it, and we're in read mode, right? And so that submit button does nothing, because uh, we, you know, we're not really submitting the page, there's no changes. Uh, so we need to work on that part of the application. So to do that, we'll add a couple buttons. So we've already added the submit button. Let's talk about that for a moment. So the submit button is used to, um, first of all, it validates, when the user first clicks on the submit button, that's going to validate our input. And any validation logic that we have set up in our controls will be uh, fired off. And we're not going to have a lot of time to get into validation in this session, but I'll do a quick example when I get back into this. Uh, the cancel button, oh, let me go back to the submit button. After it's validated, assuming all the validation passed, then the next thing that has to happen is we have to send the uh, X page up to the server. Uh, all the data sources are saved, so whatever document data sources you have open in, in edit mode that uh, will be saved or if it's a new document will be created. Uh, the next thing would be uh, the cancel button. So again, these are different types of buttons. And if you notice on the right side, the, uh, we select the button type. So we have a submit button type and a cancel button type. And the cancel button is just going to use for what it sounds like. If the user is working in, in an X page entering, entering, entering some information, uh, they click cancel. It will submit the X page back to the server, but it won't save any information. It won't do any validation. And finally, we have the other type of button called a button type. 
and that is used to uh, let us, the developer, write whatever logic we want to occur that wants to occur uh, when we click on the on uh, when we go into the on click event. So we're going to go into the event for that button, the on click event, and we're going to write either code or use a simple action to say what happens when that button is clicked. Uh, when we use a submit cancel button, we have to define the navigation for the X page. So at the X page properties, uh, on the very first tab, there is a navigation section. That's shown in number two there. And the next page, that is defining the X page we're gonna go to when we submit a document and validation has successfully passed. Or if the user clicks the cancel button, we're gonna use the next page setting to define what X page it's opened up. The uh, bottom setting is what happens when, what they say, uh, update fails. Update fails just means our validation uh, did not pass. The user entered something that uh, didn't pass our validation rules. And in most cases, you want to stay on the same X page. You don't want to take the user somewhere else. You want to keep them where they are and let them fix their error that they had in validation. Uh, when we use uh, another, you know, add a button and we want to code some logic, we're going to use a button type of button. And we're going to go to the events tab and create some, again, code or simple actions. Now, a submit button doesn't really make sense when we're in read mode, right? There's no changes to submit. Cancel button doesn't really make sense in read mode. So now, how do we do that in Domino on our forms? What type of, of logic do we use on the properties? What's that formula called? So it's been H, hide, hide when, right. So we use hide when. Good news, how many people love that hide when logic when you gotta think, okay, you know, I want this formula to be true. I don't see no one raising their hand. Good news, this is gonna be hard to retrain your mind, but you now are thinking of a visible property. And when that property is true, then uh, the, whatever you're trying to show, this doesn't just apply to a button control, this applies to anything on the X page. Everything has a visible property. And so you compute uh, whatever code you have to be true to show that. And if it's false, obviously, they don't be hidden. So the hide ones are gone. Good news. Now, one thing I, uh, we haven't pointed out yet is that you notice that to compute this, that yeah, there's a checkbox to turn it, make it visible or not. But when we want to compute it, there's a little diamond next to all these properties. And that means that that property is computable. So notice even things like the height and the width and the, and the label, all that's computable. And every, almost everything in XPage is, is computable. So one of those is the visible property, and that's what we're going to work with. Uh, this particular script, uh, one line script, is saying when this document data source uh, would means the method is editable. So when we're in edit mode, this method will return true and therefore will show that button. Okay, so let's go, uh, let's go add buttons to our application. And we'll do this on our uh, input X page. We already got the submit button. And the submit button is a button type of submit. Now before I do anything, I'm going to go to my X page properties. And I'm going to go right on the X page tab itself. I'm going to say that we want to go back to the customer view X page after we submit a document. Or if the user clicks the cancel button, we want to come back to this X page and add to the view. Okay, let me add a cancel button. We'll drag over a button. I'll give it a label. And I'll make it a cancel button type. And now these two buttons, when uh, do we want to see them? When we're in edit mode, right? So I'll go to our visible property here. And again, I have my little diamond next to it. I'll say I want to compute the value. Then it pops up our script editor. 
Okay, so now here's where we can start writing a script. Now, as new, new people to X pages, we might need a little help writing that script. So in this case, I can go over, uh, we have these um, tabs here that have reference material and schema, you know, our data source. Uh, but let's just use the reference tab and go to global objects. And we'll see our document one data source here. And so I can expand that. And now we get these different methods that are available to us in that document one data source. So these probably look a lot, uh, very familiar to you. Uh, get item value. It's going to get the you know value of a particular item that we you know pass the name as a parameter. Uh, get node ID. Get parent database. Um, is editable. Oh, wow, that might be useful for us. So let's select that just by double clicking. Uh, JavaScript always has uh, their lines into the semicolon. <coughs> Put a semicolon on the end, and that's all I got to do. So that's very useful to use that um, reference tab to kind of discover uh, methods and objects that might help you do what you're trying to do. All right, let's go over to the cancel button. Do the same thing. Uh, I could go to the reference tab, but I'm going to actually since I like, I kind of learned what that script's like. I just start typing in document and then control space, and there's autocomplete, so we'll fill in my document one data source name. And I hit period, and then it will pop up a listing of those same methods that we saw in the reference tab. And there's my is editable. So I can just click on that, double click on that, put in my semicolon. And once I have a computed property, it will say computed next to that property. And to go back and edit it again, I just double click on the word computed, and it'll pop that up. Okay, so I need, uh, I took care of when we're in edit mode, we can now submit the document, we can look, cancel the changes. Uh, but now when we're in read mode, uh, we want to allow the user to get back to the view. And we also might, when we're in read mode, want to let the user have a way to edit the document. So let's uh, append a row, add one more row to our table here, and let's add uh, two more buttons. And I'll first call this one return to view, and the next one we'll call edit doc. Okay, so now I want these to be the button type of button because I now want to code some event. So events are on the events tab. Uh, we're going to use the on click event because the user is going to click on the button. And then we have the option I can go into a script editor and I can start writing some code to switch into edit mode. But it's really easier just to use a simple action. And the simple action, uh, I'm sure you all work with the simple action to notes forms and use. Uh, the simple actions give us some way to do some things uh, without having to write any code. That's always nice. So uh, we have different categories. So for example, we have a document category. And that's just to kind of narrow down the list of choices that's coming up here. Uh, so document category would be everything pertaining to documents. And you see that we have, you know, these should look familiar to you. We can delete documents, create a response document, in this case, I want to change the document mode, and I want to go into edit mode. This is my edit button, and that's all we got to do there. Then I have to go to the other button on the events tab. Again, I'll use a simple action. So this is going to go back to that view X page. So I'll just choose that. Use the open page simple action, and that's all I got to do there. The last thing I want to do is to control my hide blend. Oops, I said those nasty few words. I'm trying to really say we want to write our visible property. So when do I want to see this? I want to see this when we're in read mode. So the not symbol in JavaScript is an exclamation point. And so I can then put in that same formula I had before. 
document one, my uh, document data source is editable. So when we're not in edit mode, that's when we want to see this button. And we'll do the same thing for the edit button. Why do it again? You did it on that one. Well, I could hide. Uh, there's actually, let me finish this. They don't have a visible property for the table row. So. It does not apply to the entire row. Okay, so it applies right to the component that you're working on. That's great. Right, so what, um, you probably know that, you know, the, another issue with the high blend that we all love is not only the logic of writing the formula, but also it applied at the paragraph level. So here it doesn't, it just applies to the control. So there's my uh, four buttons. Let's go back to our browser and our view, refresh the view. I don't even need to, let's open up a document. Now we're in read mode, I got my buttons, I can go back to the view. And I can go into edit mode. And there's my information. So I can make some changes, or I can use the cancel button. So now we've kind of built that navigation. The only thing we probably need is a uh, link somewhere here to allow the uh, user to create a new customer. So we'll come back to that. Okay, so we've worked with some of the controls here. Uh, let's look at just uh, some of the controls we need to finish up this application. Uh, one of the ones we won't put in our application, but we'll just take a look at, is the rich text control. So yes, we do have the capability of, of editing and creating rich text. And there is a rich text control. And since when we're working with rich text, we often need to uh, you know, change the font, we need to uh, create tables, create a link, embed an image all that kind of rich text kind of stuff. So the rich text editor is actually, you've probably seen it in other web applications. It's a dojo based CK editor. And the way we change, since obviously in the browser there's no menu options to change the font like there is in the notes client, they have icons that appear. And the icons are at the top of the control. And we can choose the level of functionality we want the users to have. Large would be every option in the in the book. Medium is kind of like a subset of that and slim is a very limited set of options. Okay, so let me uh, actually I'm going to go to a, a pre-existing uh, X page. So we'll get that at the rich text control. Uh, let's look at a couple other types of things about controls here too. Um, there is a multi-line edit box control, so that's it's kind of like the edit box where the user types in text, but can have multiple lines. Uh, here we have the sales rep field, and this is computed based on the value chosen in the region uh, field. So when they select a region, we're setting the sales rep. So yes, you do have the ability to do like computed type fields as well. Uh, the sales potential, let's make this uh, property a little bigger. This is an edit box, but this, if we go to the data tab, uh, our underlying sales potential field was a number. And so this sets the display type to be a number. And then we get some options here for um, decimal currency, things like that. Um, we can also set it to be integer only. We can uh, set a control to be a date and time. And then we can choose the display format if we want just a date or just a time or both or custom. And then we can set the date style. Set that back to the number. And then we have our rich text uh, control down here. Okay, so let's preview this. And you see that we have our edit box, which we've seen, our multi-line edit box, can enter multiple values. Uh, when I select a region, notice how the sales rep changes. 
I can select other products. Other products in this case is a, uh, uh, we allow it to select multiple values. So I can use the control key and select multiple values. Uh, the sales potential, that's a number. So if I put in some text here, try to submit it, it will tell me that it's not valid, a valid number type data. And then we have the rich text control where I can set the font and I can, you know, have different formatting options. Okay, so uh, now we got to finish up our application. We'll just talk about uh, the list box and combo box controls. Again, you just drag and drop those over if you didn't do use the data palette to get them there already. Uh, they have an option to allow multiple selections. I just showed you that. And then we have to define the values, so there's a values tab. So just like we do on our domino fields, you have to set the labels that will appear to the user. And then if we want, we can have an alias. So remember in, in our domino uh, field properties uh, info box, we set the uh, label and then we use the vertical bar, and then we have an alias. And that's the same thing here. So if we have a, uh, a lot of uh, fields to bring over into X pages, and they all have hard-coded choices, what we can do is cut and paste that those choices to a clipboard, even if they have that vertical bar and an alias. And then we paste them into our X page. I'll show you where in a minute. And then we can set that vertical bar to be a custom separator, and we can import in our choices. The only caveat is you got to get rid of the space around the vertical bar. Okay, computing the values for the combo box. Uh, there is a way you know, to compute the values, just like there is in, in our domino uh, fields. Uh, and we can use things like the DB column. We can also write any sort of script we want. In this case, we were using the view data source and using the get column values to get the first column. Okay, so here's an example of the DB column. Uh, and this is an example of getting the DB column going to a view in a different database. So again, this, uh, as Paul mentioned, what, yes, it's at DB column, it's formula language, but it's not, it's still JavaScript. So we gotta follow the JavaScript rules and we gotta define, first of all, the first parameter for the DB column is gonna be an array and it has to be a JavaScript array. And the first member of the array is the name of the server we want to go to. In this case, we want to go to the same server, so we have an empty string. And then the second uh, member of the array on that new array line is the path to our database, our other database. And again, in JavaScript, if you're going to have a backslash like we have here, you have to double it. Otherwise, it thinks it's a control character. So this will actually store like TLCC slash demo slash, you know, whatever. It won't store it as two uh, backslashes. So again, uh, JavaScript use commas for the parameters, not semicolons, and they are case sensitive. Uh, so that's something else you'll have to get used to. And we talked about the uh, database parameter. Uh, we have some radial buttons. We can go horizontal or vertical. <coughs> Uh, checkbox groups, we can have just one or multiple. And uh, I'll show you this later as we're talking about it. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, go back to our input X page and let's finish this up. So we have uh, our form that we're trying to convert over is here. And one of our fields is the type field. And so we have a list of choices here. And to save time, I'm just going to copy these to the clipboard. And then we'll go to our X page and we'll go to our type. I kind of lost my tabs here. The designer problem. Cut this down. Go to open it again. Uh, there we go. We got them back. Okay, so let me go to the type control, go to our values, 
And so I could add a, a value here with the add item button. I can add a couple and go in and click on them, put in a value for the label and a value for the value that can store. Okay, but I actually have these on my clipboard. So I can go to import list and I can paste in my choices. I don't have a separator here, so we'll just say no separator. Click OK, and it imported in my labels. Let's go to the status, and let's go back to our form. So our status is, it has a separator. Copy those to the clipboard, go back to my X page, and again, we'll import the list and paste it in. Uh, now we do have a separator, it's that vertical bar. And we do, unfortunately, uh, we get this space that seems to like, get stuck there when you add these. So I gotta get rid of that space manually. But it's still a lot better than typing these all in again. Or pasting them in one by one. Okay, so now I got rid of my spaces, I define my custom separator to be the vertical bar, click OK, and it imports in the labels and the values. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to want to do here in the terms of the uh, check or the uh, combo boxes and list boxes is my region. So we have a view, customers by region, and the first column is our region. And so I can use this view to get my list of choices. So I'll go over to my region control, I'll go to values, and now I want to use the add formula item. And again, I'll go to the reference tab. I know that there is an add function. So I'll come over to my add functions. And I know I have my at db column here. And again, because I'm not sure of the casing, maybe, uh, I'll just double click on it and it will fill it in for me. So now you don't have to worry about getting the casing exact. Now the first parameter is our database we want to go to. Uh, this view is in the same database, so I'll just use at db name. Make it easy. Uh, type in the name of my view. And then we want to go to the first column in the view. So that's my ActiV column, just like we would do in our like when we're designing our forms and views. Okay. Um, while we're here, let's go see what we got so far. Uh, preview it. So we have our type. We got our region was pulled in with our ActiV column. And then we got our status. Okay, let's go back to designer. Um, let's look at that customer form one more time. And notice that the other products is a checkbox. And it has a, a bunch of choices here. So we'll copy those over. And where uh, checkboxes by default are multiple values, uh, go over to my other products, uh, I'm sorry, over here, and go to uh, my X page, go to my other products. Now this is uh, got put in as an edit box. I don't really want that, I'm just gonna uh, delete it. Uh, you know, unfortunately you can't change the type of control. You know, once you put them on there, they're that type of control. So uh, I'm going to go get a checkbox. So we have our checkbox group. And what, um, one thing you want to be careful, does anyone use uh, 850 or 851? No one? OK, so that's good. Because you want to be on the uh, most recent version of designer, you can. Uh, but in 850 and 851, there was something called a radio button. And I might have hidden this already. But by default, when you first fire up Designer, it has a value for the checkbox and the radio button 
then there's a checkbox group and a radio button group. So it will have the checkbox or radio button, I forget which one, on. You don't want to ever use those. So we can take those out of our designer palette by just checking them off. What we do want to use is the checkbox group or the radio button group. So we're going to fine tune our designer palette. And you can do that for any of the controls. If there's any that you don't really want to use, you can hide them. Okay, so I want to use the checkbox group here for my other products. I'll drag that over. Okay, and there's, oops, sticking the right thing. Must have grabbed the wrong thing. Okay, checkbox group, drag it over. Okay, so the other way to do it, I think Paul showed you, is we can go to the other and position where we want it to be. I think designers have a problem. Let's just, let's just shut this down. We can go open up our input X page and try that again. Okay, there's my checkbox group. Uh, again, I combine this to my data source. Uh, to the appropriate field. I want to go to the other products field. And now we got to put in our values, which should still be on the clipboard. So I'll import the list here. There they are. And I'll say we don't have a separator. And that should be it. Okay, and the last thing I want to do, well, let's make the customer field control required. So we'll go over to validation. We're not going to have a lot of time to talk about validation, but I can set this to be required and say enter the customer name. And let's save it, let's preview it. Okay, so there's our checkbox. Uh, if I submit this, there's my validation. And this is called client side uh, validation, so that it uses a JavaScript alert. And then if I go to cancel, it will go back to the view. I can go into edit mode on an existing document and I get my toggle boxes and list boxes. Uh, one more thing I can do, but I, I think we'll, for the sake of time, we'll just skip it. And I can just add a button to create a new uh, customer document and just simply open up that customer input page. So I'm going to turn over to Paul and he's going to go through some, you know, this is all kind of bread and butter. We basically, you know, emulated the same functionality that we had in our notes application. But the real power of XPage is what we can add. Look, you know, taking the Domino applications and, and making them a step further, making them better. Uh, so Paul's going to go through some demos of some advanced techniques of how you can add a little, you know, sizzle to your applications and drastically change the interface of it. Okay, I'm in notes right now. I've actually returned to um, our course database, the Introduction to XPages course, and I'm just going to run the demos from here, but there's a, a couple of interesting demos to go through. One is combining uh, both a Domino View data source and Domino Document data source on the same X page. So let me just run that demo, and that's what we have here. And as I select these various entries in the Domino View data source, I'm seeing in the Domino Document data source on the same page. Now, there are no limits that I'm aware of in terms of how many data sources you can have on an X page, but we'll take this a little further. So you can select a customer name and see information about that customer, all of your contacts for that customer, maybe return from the view, uh, the orders for that particular customer. So really, you're just kind of limit, limited in terms of space, but that is very powerful. You never had that notes. So that's kind of Okay, let's take a look at our next demo. 
And this demo is called Joining Data from Multiple Views. So first off, let me open up hey, and explore. How many people would love in your view design to go over to a view column when you're writing the formula and do an at DB lookup? Okay, well we're going to do it here. Okay, so uh, we have uh, two data sources that are going to be added to the Sykes page or have been added. Uh, one is the sales representative view. It really just has some control documents. shows me the various regions, who the sales representative is for that region, and what their quote is. Uh, we also have you know, those familiar customer by name view, and there's one here, customer by sales rep. So what we're going to do is in that additional column that we add to our view control, do a DP lookup to return you know, the customers for that particular uh, sales rep. And basically what we're using to join there is that common region field. So let me run this demo. And that's what we see here. So that's kind of okay. All right. I want to show you one more. Maybe one more after that. Okay. So I'm going to push this button to open up demo X page 361. And here I see it in my browser, and we have charting that's available. This is delivered using the Dojo charting mo module. Uh, so Dojo is natively available uh, in Domino and your notes client. So this is, this is available, and it's kind of neat. And let me push this button to view the same chart here in my notes client. So native charting writing notes, that's good. Is that kind of thing? If you thought that was neat, then I think you'll find that this is really neat. I'm going to just move to a different working set for a different course, our Mobile X Pages course, and let's take a look. This. And this looks, you know, kind of familiar. It looks like our, our customer names, and we're seeing the documents. Uh, but this interface is a little different. I don't know if you've identified it. Now I'm just looking at this through a browser, but it does look like a phone interface. And what I can do is I can actually add a command. And platform equals iPhone to spoof an iPhone device. And for those who use the iPhone, this interface looks a little familiar. I can kind of resize that. Kind of looks like an, an iPhone application. And in fact, there's a really neat simulator that came out of the extension library. So let me preview it in there. We've made some modifications to it so that we can preview any X page. And this is the one that I was previewing. So that basically um, loads that mobile demo 331 X page into my simulator where I can see what it looks like simulated on an iPhone device or an Android device or a Blackberry device. Now tell me you think that's cool. really cool and, and and that's not that hard to do okay so once you've developed your, your basic X pages skills you know adding this skill to develop mobile pages is very very easy um, this took me about 10 minutes to create I don't know you think you do it in seven do you want to see this yes you okay. can do it in seven I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna do it in seven and then at the same time, I'll, uh, I'll do the talking and, and come down here and uh, we'll, um, I'll kind of talk you through it as Paul's doing it. So let me uh, get to where you can see the screen. 
So the first thing Paul's going to do is just create a new X page. Now, the mobile uh, X page is it's a little different uh, setup. Uh, when I created the application, uh, we uh, created two X pages. We had the view on one X page and then the document data on another X page. And so we had the two X pages and switched between them. Uh, in the mobile world, you, you kind of keep on the same X page. So we define parts of the X page that, that are what we would call the mobile page. And so what Paul's going to set up first is uh, two, first he's going to set up the structure of the uh, mobile application. And within that mobile application, we're going to have uh, a, a mobile page for our view and a mobile page for the uh, document. So the first thing he's doing, he's dragging and dropping uh, over the controls from the mobile palette. Now, mobile palette was added when we installed the IBM Upgrade Pack 1. And that's based on the extension library. So these are in the extension library as well. So Paul's adding the, the tag. Now we're working in the source view because to be honest, the, these controls don't really have the nice visual representation that, that the view control had and that like, when I was working. You know, I didn't even go in the source view. But in the mobile controls at the moment, you know, you really got to be in the source view to kind of do everything. And you also do a lot of work in all the properties tab, which I didn't get into. But those are kind of uh, where you got to be for the, um, the mobile world. OK, so uh, Paul's just putting in, uh, what's in green is just a comment, by the way. That's just a comment in our, in our source. So he's added the first app page for our view. Now we're drag and drop over an app page for our document. Okay, so he's, uh, next, he's going to add a page heading. So, you know, most phone applications have a nice heading, a header at the top, right? So he's going to add in a header and set some properties on that, including the label that appears on that heading. So that's um, down here to see the video. Uh, and he'll do the same thing on the document mobile page. So I'll add in a header and set a label on that. So we got our header set up. We have two uh, mobile pages. And notice these are inside a tag called single page app at the very top. Okay, so on the header, uh, you've probably seen a lot of uh, web, app, web apps on the phone where you have a back button on the header. So that's what he's doing now is, is defining some navigation. So we put a label for our back button and we put a uh, where we're going to go to when the user clicks on that back button. So when we're on the document mobile page, we want to let the user go back to the view. So that's what we're doing here. So he's putting in the page name view page, uh, which is the name that is defined up here, the page name for the uh, that particular page. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, uh, I think Paul's going to set the um, there's a setting for reset content right here. And what that is, uh, again, we're in the same X page. So we have to say that parts of, sometimes parts of this X page have to be reset whenever the user moves to it. And because this second X page is when uh, uh, we're going to load the document into it, uh, so obviously they're going to be loading in different documents. So we need to, uh, to say reset content equals true. So that the um, document, the new document, gets displayed. Now I attempt to save this. I got a compile time error, and the error reads: required property selected page name for the single page app. So that container single page app is has one required property. So let me set that. So I'll select my container single page app and go to its properties. And selected page name is which page to load first. And I want to load that view page. 
and let me try to save, and that fixes that. Okay, so the problem went away. Uh, we haven't added you know, the view control yet or anything, but uh, we can take a look at this just to see what we got. So you see that we got our header, you know, set up. So there, it's, you know, we have the basic structure set up, but it's still, it's not functional yet. So the next thing we had to do is add the view, uh, and we have to add the document information. That's going to be very similar to what I did. Uh, one difference will be that Paul's not using the view control. He's using from the extension library the data view. It's a little different, and this is going to be uh, what IBM chose to use to convert to mobile. Whereas the view control that I use uh, won't render at all on a, a mobile device. So this particular uh, data view from the uh, upgrade pack slash extension library is what you have to use in mobile to display a, a view. So what we uh, have to do is define uh, Paul already selected the view name, and he's going to choose to set the uh, document to open up in read mode. And then he's going to define one column that's going to be what the, uh, we see. Because, you know, in a mobile device, you can't have a lot of columns. So we're just going to have one column, and it's going to be the customer name column. And that should be it. We can preview that, and the view shows up. So we've got our view up and running. 